Hello, sweet, beautiful souls. Welcome back to Divine Alignment. Today's conversation is going to be a very powerful one, and I really want to preface this with this has been a two decade long journey for me and honestly three decade if we're counting all of the journey and experiences I've had just with my health so I really want to set the stage with that and that if you are really struggling with your health with your body with an eating disorder of any sort please please if if it's really a struggle for you, seek professional guidance and support. And with that, I have done this for much of my life. I um, have shared at various times parts of my journey overcoming an eating disorder, which I have been I I have not been in the depths of an eating disorder for my goodness, Um, probably like eight years now. Um, I really feel like I, maybe a little less, maybe maybe six or seven. Um, The energetics of this are very fascinating. The energetics of this are very fascinating because what I realized is that just because I had overcome an eating disorder, there was still the energy of control and of really struggling just being in my body. So for those of you who may not know, I developed an eating disorder back in high school and it was a very unintentional as I think sometimes they, I mean, I've seen many cases, sometimes they are very intentional with people, but for me, it was just, I began working out and I loved the way I looked. I was losing weight very quickly. I started doing boxing and these workouts burn like a thousand calories. And then I noticed if I ate less and worked out more that my results, I would lose weight even faster and my results were even better. And so I just got on this like addiction to just like the more weight I could lose, the better. People started complimenting me. I just like was getting on this high of just losing weight, feeling good. And you know, to be honest, I had been struggling with chronic health issues as well. And for the very first time, like I wasn't feeling all of the digestive issues, the pain, like it started to go away, not because the symptoms were going away, but because I was not fully in my body as I was doing this crazy workouts and not treating my body well. So what ended up happening is I went to college <laughs> to get my undergrad. And during grad school, I my very first year was kind of a blur, to be honest. I continued to lose weight. Um, I just got down to a very low weight. And I it's really fascinating because I never really like struggled with my body. I never really struggled with like my body image that is like I had tons of (laughs) tons of boyfriends in high school like I felt pretty confident in my body and it wasn't until I started losing weight ironically that I started to get self-conscious about my body and what happened because it wasn't it wasn't really about my body it was it was about the control that I was discovering I could feel and have and for me that was always kind of like the root of it is like I just wanted to feel in control which the irony of food issues is that and body issues is that the the, you're not in control it is controlling you you are not in control it is controlling you The more we seek control, the more that control has control over us. And I just was seeking more control and more control and more control. And I didn't understand why I didn't, why I felt 
so out of control. Like I had quite a good upbringing. I mean, definitely there were still issues as we all have. No one has the perfect childhood, but I spent a long time like dealing with these. So what ended up happening after my freshman year, um, I almost got pulled out of school. I was going to an outpatient eating disorder center. Um, and they eventually got to the point where they would, they refused to see me, uh, just because I was at such a low weight. They said that I was, uh, too much of a liability and they advised my mom to admit me to the hospital ASAP. And I was a very strong willed and I said, absolutely not. I will not let you do that. And I wanted to finish my freshman year of college. So towards the end of that time of college, I finally began to realize I actually can't do this myself. I, I physically, mentally, emotionally, I could, I couldn't do it myself. I knew I needed to gain weight. I knew I was not okay. And yet I couldn't pull myself out. I had dug such a deep hole and had gotten to such a low weight that I could not, I could, I just couldn't do it myself. I couldn't do it myself. And, um, and also my mom was like, we need, like, this is, this is urgent. We need to do something. So a sweet woman at, um, my school at the health center, she agreed to monitor me and my vital signs. Um, which looking back now, I'm like, wow, that, what an incredible woman. Um, what an incredible woman. She was like into the holistic health, whereas like everyone else was not like, and she, she agreed to do this. So she monitored my health, my vital signs. I had, I had to make an agreement to go to her, I think like twice a week so that I could finish my freshman year of college. And then literally the day after my freshman year of college ended, I was, I checked into treatment for an eating disorder. And I spent literally from the day summer started to the day summer ended, I was in treatment. And the day after the, I went, (laughs) I was very motivated because I wanted to go back to school. Um, And so in those two and a half months or whatever, I got weight restored and went back to college and no one knew what had happened. I didn't want anyone to know. I had like two friends at college and then my high school friends, they knew because they had seen me in my journey of like losing so much weight. But as I went back to school, to college, it was very disorienting to go back and like, no one knew what happened. I was kind of just felt like I was like a fish out of water, like thrown back into reality. And I had no really like stabilizing support system. Um, I was literally given a meal plan of like eating, measuring out foods. And it was just like, I knew at the time, like, is this, this doesn't feel healthy. (laughs) This doesn't feel like I was doing this before. Now I'm just doing this with more measurements. Um, And so it was real, like, I really struggled with that. And that's why I honestly started my Instagram account because I just wanted support. And I wanted to be in a community where other people were healing and going through eating disorders. And so that's when I started my very first Instagram account, um, which if you've been around for a long time, I called myself very fit and I was totally like, it totally just began by me, like creeping on others and like looking to them for inspiration. And then I started to post my own food because I knew that I loved, I knew that if I worked on my relationship with food and making food and like, I was really getting inspiration from these people sharing their journeys of recovery. And meanwhile, I was going to traditional therapy and 
again, I've, you, you guys have probably heard my, my thoughts, um, on traditional therapy, but I went to traditional therapy before I went to treatment during treatment and after treatment, I saw many therapists and I, I don't know, you guys, it just didn't, it didn't help me. It didn't help me. We talked about my mom and my dad and like, it was, I felt like it was just like beating the problem. And so finally I was just like, I'm pay like, we're paying for this. I might as well start like talking about some of my other problems. So I just used it to like talk about what was going on in my life. And like, that was great and nice, but like, because I was very secretive all of this time. And it didn't really help the eating disorder though. And so after grad school, that is when I really was like, well, I'm in, like, I'm getting more into health. I'm starting to feel more healthy, but maybe if I really like understand my relationship with food and nutrition and like diet, because I've always been into nutrition. My mom has always been into nutrition, um, but in a very healthy, balanced way. So, you know, here's the, like another reason that like, you don't have to have an intense, intense trauma to trigger any type of struggles later on in your life. And I did experience some traumas, like I definitely did. And it makes sense why all of those led to the eating disorder. Um, but well, I'll get to that. I'll get to that in a moment because, um, yeah, actually I do think this is important to, to preface and to share is that this last thing that I'm going to share with you that has changed everything I've done, I've done the mom work. I've done the dad work. I've done the confidence work. I have done the imprinting from society, from schooling, from friends. I've worked on my own inner self-confidence. Like there are layers to these and it doesn't really matter. Like if it's an eating disorder, disordered eating, body issues, weight issues, uh, confidence issues, or just health issues, it doesn't really matter. Like there are layers, especially and really with addictions, because this is, this is an addiction. This is a, it, this is an addiction to, um, using an external something or other. So use this and apply this to any type of addiction, shopping, working out drugs, alcohol, uh, shopping, um, food, food, I think is one of the trickiest ones though, because we have to make peace with it. We have to, at this point in time, we're going to be, we're, we have to deal with it every day. Right. And, and now I'm like, what a joy. Cause I I've learned to really like love food and healthy food and making food. And, and I really feel like, uh, my Instagram and, um, going to school for nutrition really helped heal a lot of that because I learned to fall in love with food, um, making it pretty, um, working with brands to create content for them. Like it was just really fun for me. And that was like a really beautiful experience that, um, I did not plan to happen. Um, obviously I plan to go to grad school for nutrition, but I didn't plan for my Instagram to become like my, I, that was my business for, quite a large time of doing food blogging and working with companies and creating content for them. And I still kind of do that here and there. You guys see, I work with some of my favorite companies, um, because I still love food. It's still such an important, we have to make peace with food. We have to, food is such an important part of this human experience and fueling our bodies with good food is going to change everything. However, it's really important the place that it's coming from. And I realized for so much of my life, it was fueling myself with healthy food. It was coming from a place of fear rather than a place of love. And so, you know, as I was in grad school, I really feel like that dissolved um, a lot of my struggles with an eating disorder. I was really like pursuing my my business, my my work, my vocation, and 
that was such a healing experience. However, as some of you have probably heard and seen is that I developed a ton of health issues in grad school. And that's because I was stressed. I was in fight or flight. I just like had all of these things. So many, like so many things. And maybe some of you have heard I developed eczema on my hands and I couldn't cook. And so this was like one of the hardest parts of my journey is being in grad school, learning what to do for people with eczema, applying everything that I'm learning of what to do with eczema on myself. And yet none of it's working. It completely took over my hands. I could, I couldn't wash my hands. I couldn't cook. I couldn't like do anything. And it was so painful. And so I was like, okay, if I'm learning all of this stuff to do in grad school to help, that's supposed to help this. I'm doing the elimination diet. I'm doing like it, all of these herbs and supplements and protocols. And like, I was always though, again, steroids, like that was, I, I knew that I would not go there. Um, and, and not that, I mean, I just read too many stories about how steroids and pharmaceuticals, they suppress the body. And so if you suppress something, it's going to have to come out in another way. And oftentimes these types of things make whatever issue stronger because it's not actually healing the root cause. So I was pleading to God, the universe source, like, show me how to heal this eczema. I discovered a podcast. Some of you probably heard the story. They were talking about hypnotherapy. So I booked a session. I had never done hypnotherapy before. I did one session. Two weeks later, the eczema completely gone, has never come back on my hands ever since. Like you're on video, you can see what a blessing, what a blessing. And that's when I began to see, oh, this is the work. This is the deeper work. This is what I have to do. And through hypnotherapy, I began unraveling the deeper stories, the deeper stories that I tried to do in traditional therapy of what did your mom do when you were, you know, like, let's just talk about it. What did your dad do? And let's just talk about it. And this was like getting to deeper, deeper, deeper roots. And so when I say I've done a lot of layers of this, I mean, I've done a lot of layers of this. And all this to say also is that this, this disordered eating, like an eating disorder, um, because I never healed the root, root, root cause during treatment, traditional treatment is like, I'm, I'm forever grateful for it because it helped me restore my weight, which I couldn't do on my own. But our traditional medical system is like light years behind. Um, I'm just being honest. And I know there are some other facilities that are more like holistic and natural, but the one that I went to was very much just like, not, not. Um, so I'm not going to disclose any names or anything like that, but, um, it just wasn't working with a dietitian, doing traditional therapy, and then just putting weight on me. So because I didn't heal the root of that during treatment, which honestly, like I, I physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, I actually wasn't prepared to do the deeper work then. So, you know, it's all, it's all worked out like absolutely perfect and divine timing and all of that. Um, and I don't, I have no like ill feelings towards the people towards my journey, like any of it, I really believe it's all been perfect. And I'm so grateful. Like I truly had this moment that I'm going to share with you guys. I'm just of such deep gratitude. So after I spent this time healing the issues and things that came up with my mom and things that came up with my dad and things that came up with my friends, I started getting into deeper layers of like, well, what was like, not only just what happened around food, but like what happened around me and my confidence and, um, guilt and shame and really control, like, what was I seeking to control? And so it really just evolved into kind of like this orthorexia and just like control around food, which has lessened and lessened and lessened and lessened over the years it's really like you know they I don't really like this the saying like time heals all but in some cases it does 
not for everything, but in some cases, like it can just fade away. But I was still just feeling like this, like, and this is like, you know, I've been on this journey of really coming into my body because what I realized is I detached so deeply from my body through health issues from the eating disorder that it's really been a process of coming back into my body. It's been a process of coming back into my body. And I discovered through hypnotherapy and through this healer that I saw of deep traumas that I had no idea, like really traumatic things that happened to me when I was two years old. I had no idea happened. And how am I supposed to heal something like that in traditional therapy when my conscious mind doesn't even remember it, right? And so it was really working through healing the body and like making my body safe. Also finding out I was a projector in human design and just like a highly, highly sensitive person. It did not feel safe to be in my body because I have been, I realized I spent so much of my life feeling other people. And I believe a lot. I'm sure if you're listening to this, like you can relate on some, some level because I'm sure you are a sensitive person as well, is that when we are sensitive people, it becomes really easy to feel others' emotions, their pain, their whatever they're going through and think that it's ours or, or at the very least take on some part of it. Because also like we're very good at helping others heal, especially like projectors in human design. We literally have the ability to alchemize people's pain, but it's at the expense of our energy. And so learning how to show people how to heal because that's what causes and it leads to lasting heal is when people do their own work and so I realized for much of much of my life I was un, unbeknownst to me and unknowingly healing people like which is it makes sense why I've been led to this to this world and this realm um but that's that's then after I started doing so many layers of hypnotherapy and so many layers of just like working with my subconscious mind, I then begin to get more into energy work and seeing that like, there are things that we don't need to go back into the story and that we can just use energy work for. And that's, and then I begin to learn about the Akashic realm and past lives and uh, working with, with my ancestors and, and my angels and guides. And so it's been all of this culmination of beautiful modalities and so I will never say like there is one thing that heals all and that heals everything because I think it's a culmination of so many things and as I began to do that my the fear of food dropped away quite a long time ago however I realized there was still this root of knowing that food had made me really sick at one point and that I I realized I still had a deep fear that if I don't eat healthy, I will not be the version of myself I desire. I will not be loved. I will not be perfect, which what even is perfect, right? And this was... A really big shift in my journey as well is that realizing that it wasn't about the food I was trying to control, it was about myself I was trying to control. And you know, this is this is I think a big part of it for a lot of people. And so I see when I work with clients that there's often you're either in one of two camps, like the restricting, well, technically three, the restricting or the overeating, or you do both. Um, but what's interesting about these is they have different, um, <laughs> they really have different textures and different energies in the body, yet ultimately it doesn't really matter because it's still, it's still a numbing and a dissociation from the body. And it's still a not hearing of the body's wisdom, whether overconsumption or underconsumption or both it's not being in touch with the body 
and we continue to do this for long enough, we get into that pattern, to that cycle, to that way of being and operating and living with food. So I kind of have just continued to, you know, when we live with something for so long, it kind of just like hangs out in the background and we don't even realize how good things can get. We don't even realize so often, like I have, I have received such incredible experiences and miracles and stuff over the years that I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize how, how like not good things were until things get so much better. And this has happened in so many areas of my life. And this recently has been one of them that I was like, oh my gosh, like I didn't realize that I still had this, this desire to control so deeply, like woven into my my DNA and my body and my essence. And a big part of this, I think also for me was my hormones. Um, I lost my, I know this is like, um, wow, like a really like vulnerable share, but we're just, this is a vulnerable episode. I lost my period and I did a, I did a video on this, um, and a podcast on this. So I'll link that below if you want that whole story, but I lost my period when I lost my eating disorder, obviously. Um, I mean, not obviously not everyone does, but when you're at a low weight, you're not going to menstruate. And they told me in order to leave treatment, they said that you have to have your cycle back and my body hadn't physically naturally got my cycle back and so they I agreed to just go on birth control so that I could get out of treatment and so I started birth control because they also believed that that's a normal natural period started birth control thought I had my period back went about that for years and years and years and it wasn't until I got to grad school then I was like what if like this birth control is leading to some of these health issues. So I got off birth control that led to a whole cascade of just like issues because that's another way of like not being in the body because when I'm never going to like tell a woman to not be on birth control because I understand there are circumstances and it's totally your body and I honor your, however you want to live in your body. However, it doesn't allow the body to express its normal, natural. It's, it's not a real bleed. It's a fake bleed. It's, it's manipulating your hormones. And so you're not really in touch with your hormones. And there's so many studies about like, when you're on birth control, you're, you're going to be attracted to different men. You're going to smell different, different scents that are attractive to you, then that's why a lot of women will get off birth control and then they're not attracted to their partner anymore. And this is very real. So getting off birth control was such a blessing. I'm so glad I did. Um, but then I didn't get my period back and I tried everything. And when I tell you guys, like everything, like I, I tried everything. And so for me coming into this place now of getting my period back, I'm like realizing this is a big part of the journey. And what I haven't shared is that I got my period back had this beautiful, magical experience, which if you want that whole thing, I will link that below. And then it kind of just went away. And then recently it just came back again. And I realized that the reason why I believe I subconsciously pressed it, pushed it away again, is because when my hormones turned back on, I started feeling years and years and years of things that I had been repressing and you know and I think it's really important for me to also bring up that if you haven't listened to this lot to the last episode I did or no the previous the two ago realizing for me because I think this is such a big part of my healing journey and maybe perhaps the catalyst that led to this realization about food and weight is that I'm a very gifted healer and very, very gifted. I have had people have profound transformations and it totally bypasses logic and, um, it's really incredible. And I'm so honored and grateful. And I see people, I see the depth 
of what they're going through, I see, uh, like, it's just incredible to work with these higher planes and higher energies. And then realizing that just because I can see all of the issues and problems in another doesn't mean that I can see them myself for myself. And that just because I'm really, really good at helping heal others, it doesn't mean that I have to be completely healed myself and know how to heal myself. That's why we have each other. And that's probably what also like that piece had to click into place before this piece for me. So has this been enough of a buildup? Because, oh, so I, so I am on my period again, but th has this been enough of a buildup? Because I'm going to share truly, it just dropped in yesterday as I was driving to the coast. And it's almost going to make me emotional because it just feels so, so simple. And also so profound. And what I realized was that through dedicating so much time, energy, and attention to food, to my body, even if it was just to eat healthy, even if it was all of these things and routines or whatever that were all good by dedicating so much mental effort and attention and time and energy. I was detracting from giving that love, energy, time, support to God to the universe, to source, to my mission. And when I realized that, something clicked so deeply within me. Something clicked so deeply within me that, that, that you know, and I've had this iteration of realization before of like, of like how selfish to dedicate so much time and energy and attention to like thinking me, me, me. But that just always sent me down like the guilt train of like, oh, now I feel guilty for having these thoughts about myself. And like, that didn't really help. It didn't really help. But when I had it, and so again, I really think probably the realization about not having to heal myself and not having to know everything to know about myself has led to this realization of this last, what feels like this last big piece for me of like, All that time and energy I can dedicate to God, I can dedicate to the universe, I can dedicate to source, which is ultimately my greatest desire to strengthen that relationship, to strengthen that connection and to grow that and expand that and live in that energy. And I have lived so much of my life in the energy of magic and miracles and synchronicities and realizing that when I fully come into my body even deeper, truly all of this is about allowing myself to land in the body. And as I've healed so much of my hormones and which are probably still healing and really balanced my nervous system, which I believe is such a key aspect and trauma is going to be the number one thing that keeps your nervous system in fight or flight period. And also your blood sugar. So working with someone to help you with those two aspects is very, very, very key. And then of course, there's a, a lot of other little things underneath that that can be causing it and playing a role, but those are the two big ones. And so for me, realizing that not only is it detracting from my love of God and the universe and connection with spirit and source, but that it was also keeping me out of my power, right? And and I saw so clearly, I was shown clairvoyantly that, oh my gosh, there are literally forces 
that want people to be struggling because when you are in an addiction, when you are in a struggle with your health, struggle with your body, struggle with your relationships, struggle with your money, struggle with anything, you're not in your full power. We're just not. And are we going to be in our full power 24 seven? No, it's part of the human experience. But what I realized and saw and was shown is that by not being in my power, I was more easily able to be manipulated by whoever you want to say, the forces that be. Because when we are not in our power, we're not in our intuition and truth and trust. We're not in our sovereignty. We're not in our alignment with source and God. And that is why we have such a big industry of pharmaceuticals and of diet pills and supplements and surgeries and like all of these things. Like, why do you think this is like a billion, trillion, whatever, gazillion dollar industry of like people wanting to look good and people wanting to be the right size, whatever the right is. And meanwhile, spending so much focus and attention on this, when it could be towards God, it could be towards the universe, it could be towards our mission. And when we're in that energy, we're going to be healthy. We're going to feel vital. We're going to have life force energy flowing through our body. And we're going to be in our power and trust and intuition and alignment with source. And so truly there's not like a more rebellious thing that we can do in this day and age than to not follow the system and follow our guidance system, to follow the path that isn't screaming to us, but that's whispering to us. This path is always going to scream to us of, you're not good enough, do this, take this, be this. Whereas the other path of source and intuition and God and our soul is like, but this is your joy. This is your happiness. This is your heart. This is your destiny. This is your path. This will make you happy. There's so much joy and love and involvement and abundance and love and trust and fulfillment in this path. And yet we're sold the lie that it lies in the other path. But it takes every day. We're choosing what to give our energy to. And right now you're choosing to give your energy to this. And like, that's like, what an honor, like, thank you. And also like your soul is thanking you because there are a million other things that are going to be asking for our attention always. And I believe in this time, especially in this time when there's more information than there's ever been available to us, our attention is our greatest currency, truly time and our attention. It's our greatest currency, not money, not all of these other things, it's our time and attention. So what are you going to choose to give your time and attention and energy? What are you giving your energy to? And I realized like, I have to give, I don't have to, I get to give, I choose to give my time, love and attention and energy to God, to the universe, to source. And not in the way that religion has programmed us to do, not in that way at all. That felt very much like forceful and like I was a bad child if I didn't. This is out of pure devotion to love and expansion and growth and spirit. I I don't I your spiritual path is is yours, but I personally just don't ascribe to religion any longer because that's what it felt like to me. I felt like um rules that didn't feel in alignment with with me it didn't feel like the love that I know that God is and but of course like you you follow what whatever brings you to love that's that's the goal and that's the path right it's the goal and that's the path so I'm never going to whatever you're doing that brings you love and joy and your power and peace and sovereignty. And so, you know, this doesn't mean that 
I still don't do all of the things that I've done previously. It's so fascinating because when we change, it's like the world can change around us simply because we've changed our perception. And that's such an interesting thing because that's such an interesting thing because nothing actually had to physically change externally. But when we change internally, things inevitably are going to change externally. And I've been noticing that happen just as I've made this small shift already. And this literally happened yesterday. And since the shift that I made in that other episode, and this is such a profound thing that it's really not, and just more, more evidence to show that it's not just about changing the body. It's about changing your beliefs. It's about, there is no perfect. Like I can tell you, I can tell you when there was no weight that I got to that was ever enough. It was never enough. There was no size. There was no, like, and I, oh my gosh, like I look back and it's just like, wow. And again, while the journey is always perfect, like I also oftentimes find myself thinking to like, am I going to worry about this on my deathbed? And am I going to worry about, am I going to be so glad that I spent so much time and energy and like worrying about eating healthy and control and like these things. And the answer is no. And so here's where the motivation changes because there is, as I mentioned, like we can eat healthy out of fear and we can eat healthy out of love. We can exercise out of fear and we can exercise out of love. We can live out of fear and we can live out of love. And they may, from the external perspective, have the same byproduct, but the internal process is very different. The internal state is very different, right? So me eating healthy, it's going to look one way to a person, but the motivation beneath that is different. And like I said, I had come so, so far and I really didn't think like I just thought like, well, maybe I'm just like, this is part of like my Virgo essence, right? Of like, my, I'm a Scorpio, but I'm Virgo rising. So I always was kind of just like chalked it up to that of like, Virgos are like very OCD in particular, and they just really like to be healthy and all of these things. And that's true. Um, but is it coming from a healthy place? Right. And I realized it was, it wasn't fully hundred percent healthy. Like it was still felt like a, a need or else, like if I don't eat healthy, I'm not fully loved and perfect and in control, <laughs> which again, the irony is that that was controlling me. That was controlling me. And I just like want to share that the freedom and peace and open and expansiveness that is available to us is just, it's beyond, it's beyond, beyond, beyond what is, what we could ever comprehend. And so my goal, my hope is that, is that the remembrance of, of where you place your attention, and this isn't about forcing, this is about loving, this is about allowing and trusting your journey, your path, and whatever that looks like for you. And, and, you know, they always tell you just like, just love yourself, just love yourself. Right. And like, that'll fix everything. But like, how the hell do we do that? How do we do that? And I really believe for me, like, it has been a journey. It's been a journey of, again, like, I'm just sharing with you for me, what I did is like, I had to do like the traditional conventional route for a little while. Cause I was so like, I really needed it. And then I went to the subconscious work and hypnotherapy. And, and I still go back to that because it's powerful. And then really dove into the energy work and Akashic realm and past lives and ancestors. And now it's just like, what is my soul leading and guiding me to do? What is God leading and guiding me to do? And now for me, like channeling and having this higher wisdom and higher guidance, like that dictates everything. I would never say like, it was just this one thing or this, what you know, whatever, you know, like it's been all of these things. And now it was like, oh, that was, that was, that was the big last little bit. 
And I, as I say that, I'm sure that I, like I've been sharing with you guys, like there's always the next level. There's always more, there's always greater expansion and, and growth and it can always get even better. And like, that's one of my mantras. Like, how can it get even better? How can I get even better? Right. Oh, like just feel into the energy of that. Like, how can it get even better? But for me, it was just this deep, deep shift of coming back into my relationship with, with source, with the universe, with God, and realizing that by directing my attention to that, I am in my power and I am in my truth. And seeing that there are forces and sources, and I don't want to get too into the conspiracy, whatever's there are forces and sources that want you unwell. They want you not in your power and whatever way in your life, you're not in your power. You are easily manipulable, manipulatable. That's a hard word to say fast. <laughs> Wherever you're not fully in your power, you are easy to manipulate, to be sold to. And we have like, again, like a bajillion trillion dollar industry in a lot of things. And when you're in your power, it doesn't mean you don't buy things and you don't feel things and feel the economy, but it's done through a very different energy and through pure desire and pleasure rather than needing to fix yourself because you're already perfect. You're, you couldn't be more perfect. Your perceived flaws and all, they're perfect. They're part of your journey. They're part of your expansion and growth and evolution. And they're here to serve a divine purpose. And so realizing that by actually allowing myself to be in this worry and underlying fear and underlying seeking control, I was being manipulated. I was being, I was more easy to manipulate. And God, source, the universe is never going to work with us in that way. It's, that energy is never going to say you need to do something to be something. You need to do this or else this. Never. What the universe and God, source, divine say is what makes you happy. What's what makes you enjoy? What make what gives you pleasure? What what makes you feel love? They're two very different energies and hopefully just by me sharing that you can feel the difference between the two because it's very different energies. And so where can you choose love over fear? Where can you choose trust over doubt? Where can you choose expansion over contraction? And in all of those moments of choosing your soul's path, your soul's heart, your soul's light, your soul's love, your soul's truth, you're not going to get it perfect every time. We're not meant to. It's part of this game of earth, learning, learning along the way. But I believe that choosing God, choosing source, choosing the universe, choosing our soul, choosing to live in love, sovereignty, truth. This is where the blessings, abundance, health, love, that's where they all lie. And so I hope this provides you with some insight, realization, aha. And if it did, please let me know. Please share below. And also absolutely work with someone if you're still working through these layers. Myself or someone else, like work with someone who can see your blind spots, someone who can see the parts that you haven't seen. We're not meant to see them all ourselves do this deeper work, do work with energy, work with your subconscious mind, work to release and peel back the layers. We all have them. We all have them. It's part of this process of unlearning and learning and learning and unlearning. It's part of the process. And if this served you in any way, please, please consider living, leaving a review on the podcast if you're listening and if you're on youtube please subscribe hit the like button like truly these little things make such a difference um leaving a review all of these things 
if this provided you any value, I would so appreciate that. And please share it with someone else. If so, if you know someone who is struggling, who is seeking answers or guidance, um, and of course on social media, if you found any value as well and tag me at I am Jasmine Elise. So until next time, my friends, this is truly such a beautiful life. If we allow ourselves to live into the abundance, expansion, and love available. And I just truly wish that for all of you. And so with that, I'm sending you all infinite love and light.